Today, I want to talk about something that's been on my mind a lot recently. Something that I kind of just want to get off my chest all in one go. So this is that video. And it has to do with the episodes I experience as part of my schizoaffective disorder. And if you're new here, my name is Kit and I'm diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, which is a condition where someone experiences symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, either major depression or in my case, bipolar. And the thing that's been on my mind a lot recently is that I am frustrated that I cannot predict my own disorder. I can predict some aspects of it, which I'll get to in this video, but for a large part of it, if I get a stressful life event or something else that triggers an episode, I have no idea what's in store for me for that episode. I have a list of symptoms that I might experience, but this list of symptoms is it's not short, it's quite long because schizoaffective disorder is, according to my former psychiatrist, and it makes sense based off all the research I've done, it's pretty much an umbrella term for all the major mental health conditions that are biological in nature. So schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, anxiety, that kind of thing. And it's just, it's just frustrating because it, it just means that I experience a lot of stuff and I can experience a lot of stuff as a result. So today I want to go over the three different kinds of episodes I experienced because that's how I was able to, that's, that, that's how I was able to narrow it down. That's all I was able to narrow it down. And it just, it just frustrates me that I can't figure out which one I'd get at any given time. But anyway, I kind of want to talk to you about it because schizoaffective disorder, every episode for me is different. And it sucks because that means I can't figure out what's going to happen next. I can't really properly prepare because I might prepare for one thing and then something totally different happens. And then it's like, why did I even try in the first place? But yeah, anyway, that's just how it is. So the first type of episode I experienced, this is the one that I've experienced the most. And it's arguably the most predictable. If I was able to predict anything, this is the most predictable one. But even then, it's not duration of the different parts is not, not predictable. But basically I have a typical mood cycle. So the first episode I get is primarily bipolar in nature. Before I was diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, I had a textbook bipolar one diagnosis and it was a little bit jarring at the time, that's for sure. But it did explain a lot and it made a lot of sense. And the more I learned about bipolar disorder, the more I realized, yeah, I kind of fell into that category. I just heard voices the whole time. So that's why I was schizoaffective is because I did have those psychotic symptoms. But anyways, I typically when I'm having a purely bipolar episode, I experience a period of high energy, uh, mania or hypomania. These days it's hypomania. Mania I have not experienced in years, which is good because mania is super, super dangerous for me. But I'll get a period of hypomania, which is when I have higher energy than normal, I may spend a little bit more money, I may do a few more things, I might start new creative hobbies, I might dive into old projects, pick up old things. I basically have motivation to do anything and everything I want to do, and I consider it somewhat of a superpower, even though it's my brain redlining itself. So it's not actually healthy in any way, but it feels absolutely amazing because I get the bright side of mania, right, mania, bright side of hypomania, and all is well. So yeah, so I get Hypomania, I do a lot of fun things, do a lot of fun stuff, I make a lot of stuff, and yeah, I generally have a good time. Then <laughs> I sink into depression, which is the total opposite of hypomania. I have no energy to do everything. All that stuff I started, I have no desire to finish it. I have no motivation to clean my apartment or do anything. I just slip into a state of being less than myself, of being a shell of myself, and I just generally feel horrible. And the the jump from being up to being down is very jarring. I can tell you that. And then after that, I get what's called a mixed state where I get elements of both of the things I just mentioned. And as you could probably guess, that can get a little bit dangerous. Remember how I said mania was dangerous? Well, mixed mania is even more dangerous. And that's when, if you think about it, someone who has all the energy and motivation to do anything and everything they want to do, combine that with the dark thoughts and outlook of depression, and it doesn't take a lot of imagination to figure out how that can get really bad really fast. So when I'm in these purely bipolar episodes, once I hit the depressive state, that's usually when I know I have to get help because the problem with the hypomania is that I don't actually have insight to my disorder very often when I have that. 
Very rarely do I realize I'm hypomanic when I'm hypomanic. It's the weirdest thing. But when I am depressed, I know I'm depressed. That's usually when I seek help for it because I know that after the depression, if this goes in patterns I've experienced in the past, mixed mania, dysphoric mania, mixed states will follow. And that's super dangerous, super scary, and I hate it every time. But that's basically the trajectory of a purely bipolar episode. And I know I mentioned part of being schizoaffective, I experienced psychosis. Which brings me to the next kind of episode I experience, which is the ones that are primarily schizophrenic in nature. So in the first episode, it's all mood stuff. Psychosis doesn't really play a role. It might be in the background doing stuff, but it doesn't get worse, it doesn't get better, it's just kind of there. But in these primarily schizophrenic episodes, the mood disorder is what takes the backside. So I might still have maybe some ups, some downs and stuff, but it's on the back burner. It's not the main focus and it doesn't cause the majority of the issues. So in these primarily schizophrenic episodes, I'll be experiencing more delusions and hallucinations than normal. So I'll be hearing voices, both internal and external. So I hear voices inside my head, kind of like where I hear thoughts in an internal monologue. They're just voices that I can't control. I can have conversations with them. They don't sound like me. But I'll also have external voices, so I'll hear mumbling or sounds that don't make sense, and they'll kind of ratchet up during this time. So it's a little bit jarring. I can mostly tell the difference between what's real and what isn't, but I definitely do question reality more. But what really messes with me in my psychotic episodes is that I experience religious delusions. And I'm getting a little more aware of how religious delusions affect me how they appear with me, trying to gain some self-awareness into that. And the best way I can say it is that I give God and religion another chance. Like I have a desire to be religious again, to pray again, to worship a God again. So when I'm in my primarily schizophrenic episodes, I have noticed that I do get a little more, little more into that. And I haven't had very many purely schizophrenic episodes. Um, I've really only had one super defined one and that was like last May. I, I've had hints that I've had them in the past and I just didn't know that's what they were, but like for sure in terms of my self-awareness, last May I had one and that was kind of what was going on with that. So I have made videos about that. I'll link them up here if you wanna see them. It was horrible, it was awful. But the psych psychosis, the mood disorder was on the back burner um, and stuff. And I also was having, I also get these a recurring delusion I have is that people I care about are going to die no reason why, just they're gonna die and I'm supposed to know about it. Or in the past, it's been me, I'm gonna die and I'm just supposed to know about it. And so all that stuff will take take the forefront. It will really affect me. It'll really, frankly, it'll really f with me. Like it'll absolutely f with me. And I hate it a lot. I mean, I hate all aspects of schizoaffective disorder for the most part, except for hypomania. Hypomania is fun, but I hate most, I hate all this. I wish I didn't have to deal with any of it, honestly. Like I just get rid of all of it. I'm, I'd be so much happier without all this crap. <sighs> yeah, but I would say those are the, those are the first two. So primarily mood, primarily psychotic, but then we get, we, we get a third option. And third option is both together. And when both of them are together, bad things happen. Bad things happen so, so quickly, so bad, so awful. It is terrible because if I am manic or hypomanic and I'm also experiencing like religious stuff, in addition to hearing voices and everything, like that's just a recipe for disaster. So I had an episode I don't remember when because I'm really bad with time. Thank you, schizoaffective disorder. But I had an episode in recent years where I was in psychotic depression. So I had had a period of hypomania, which was pretty typical of when I experienced hypomania. But when I slipped into depression, the psychosis kicked in and got worse. So I had a lot more negative voices and stuff. I wasn't experiencing any delusional thinking at the time, which was really good, but I did have an increase in hearing voices and having those internal auditory hallucinations to the point where I had a voice in my head almost constantly, it was pretty negative and he would comment on anything and everything that was going on and I literally just, I, I felt like I was just a witness to uh, uh, just someone just talking about anything and everything all the time. Couldn't make him shut up. It was awful, it was terrible, but it was, I was experiencing mood and psychotic symptoms together and th that's just, it was horrible, it was awful. I know I said that before, but whatever, anyway. Yeah, it's all terrible. <laughs> but yeah, so they can they can happen at the same time. And when they happen at the same time, it's 
it, it's it, it's having a purely mood episode is the most predictable of the three. Having a purely psychotic episode is the second most predictable of the three. But the third one, the one where I get both, that's where things go off the rails really fast because I don't know what's happening next because I don't know what's gonna get worse, what's gonna get better, what's gonna change, what's gonna shift. And it's really frustrating because that's what scares me. What scares me is that I won't be able to cope with what happens. Like what if I have an episode where I can't cope with what's being thrown at me? And that, that scares me a lot. That really scares me a lot. And I've done DBT, I have cope ahead plans, I have a psych ward go bag. I mean, for crying out loud, like I'm ready to check myself in if something really bad happens, but it still scares the crap out of me that things can get so bad and they can get so unpredictable that I don't know what to do. And that's just the reality of living with a psychotic disorder. It's the reality of living with a mood and psychotic disorder. I mean, schizoaffective disorder, it's technically a psychotic disorder, but it's also, it also has mood disorder components, so semantics, I guess. But it, it's, I really, recently, it really has sunk in how much I hope my meds continue to work. How much I hope my medication continues to do its job, because without it, I feel like I am facing a tsunami of symptoms that I, I, I worry I won't, won't be able to cope with forever. So, um, but fortunately my antipsychotic keeps the psychosis away, the lithium and the lamotrigine. Yeah, Phil Pye didn't name the antipsychotic by name those, but lithium and lamotrigine, the mood stabilizers, keep the mood stuff away. The Zyprexa keeps the psychosis away. Yeah, I hope it all works, but really that's all. That's all for this video. That's all I wanted to get off my chest is just a lot of frustration about this disorder and how it can't be predicted. And I wish I could predict it. I, in all of my self-awareness and everything I try to do to manage my disorder and continue to be an independent person, uh, there's a lot I don't know. There's a lot I can't plan for. And yeah, that's just the reality of living with a severe mental illness. So thanks for watching. Uh, join me for making the uncomfortable comfortable. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.